Hey, what's going on, everybody? Verdi here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today, we're going to talk about Soulbound Boyer. She is a Barbarian Rare Champion, and she's one of the new champions that is required for the Rotos Fusion. But her kit looked interested enough for me to try her out. She's kind of like a mix between Queen Eba and Coleheart, honestly. So, uh, let's go ahead and go over her skills real quick. Her A1 attacks all enemies and has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. Her A2 attacks one enemy and has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. Will ignore 75% of the target's defense. And then her A3 attacks one enemy and has an additional 25% chance of inflicting a critical hit. Also has a 75% chance of fully depleting the target's turn meter. When fully booked, this is 100%. So that's where the Kohar comes in. It kind of... Does the same thing as Heartseeker, except it doesn't do the crazy damage, but it can still be used to deplete the, the, the turn meter. And why I say Queen Eva is because she has a increased uh, she has increased ally critical rate in all battles by 12%, and also her skills come with 25% chance to critical hit. So with 25 plus 12, you have 37, and then you can get 5 from the Masteries, and she starts with 15 like any other champion, so that's 20, 37, 57, um, 37 plus 20 is 57. And that means that we only need to build her with a 43% crit rate in order for her to have 100% crit chance, which is really, really nice. It allows you to build crit damage uh, a lot easier than you normally would be able to. She also has a really decent attack uh, for a rare and uh, not bad speed. So uh, I think she, she's overall a very good champion. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the artifacts that I have on her. So I'm kind of going to go show a couple of different sets with this um, with this champion and kind of how she functions on auto and kind of a couple of things that are wrong with her or are wrong with the coding that was done by Plarium for this champion. So currently I have all damage on her for campaign farming. So we have an attack set, which, once again, you don't really have to worry about the sets. You just need to get 47 or 43% um, crit rate, and then as much crit damage and attack as you can get if you're going to use her as a campaign farmer. I pretty much stacked, as like I said, as much crit damage and attack as I could here. Um, attack, crit damage, and attack accessories. Her skills are, are fully booked. And her masteries. So we went with uh, crit damage down here, more damage on our A1, and, and then on another one that I really like here is Evil Eye because uh, I'm actually going to show that in dungeons later on in the video. So she doesn't really need masteries. Uh, I'm going to show a couple of different ways that you can uh, that you can build her for campaign farming and dungeons. So let's go ahead and run her in campaign, and I kind of want to show you what is going on with the AI and why I think that it's done wrong. Uh, I'm going to use max level champions here because she's actually been functioning differently with me depending on which champions I've had in the fight, which is completely bogus to me. I really don't know why she works that way, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to use the exact three same three champions, and I'm just going to change a couple of artifacts on her. And uh, to try to make sense of what is actually going on with her AI. So let's go ahead and start this up. Now, if we run it on, if we run it on uh, on manual, she one shots every wave, and she's a six second campaign farmer, one of the best farmers in the game, right? So the problem comes when you put it on auto. So she will do soul bound shot. Then another, then then her A three or uh, then her A two or whatever, and then when she gets to A to wave three here, she does her soul bound shot again. All right, so making it a nineteen second run, which technically isn't really that good, especially for the artifacts that she is wearing. Okay, so the first thing we're going to show is that she doesn't really need masteries because we're going to take off forty percent crit damage here. And we're going to put on speed boots. 
I think that I'm using regeneration. I am. All right, so we're going to take off a bunch of attack. We're going to take a 40% crit damage. So we'll run her here without the crit damage and without, without the attack percentage boots, giving her a lot less stats. And she is still able to one-shot every single wave without the 40% crit damage and the 50% or 60% attack boots. So she is still a, a six-second farmer, technically, if she was functioning properly. So before we had attack percentage boots and we had the and, the, and we had the crit damage neck, right? I'm going to put the crit damage back on the neck neck back on, and the only thing that I changed here are the boots. So she has more speed now, and remember before she was doing, she was doing soulbound arrow or whatever it's called, and then she was doing her A2, then she was doing her A1, A1, and then she went back into the soulbound arrow on her on the third wave. So if we run her on auto now with the speed boots, she will do the, the soulbound move first. Then she's going to do A1. She's going to do A1 on the second wave. And she's going to do A1 on the, on the third wave. Why it's different, I honestly can't tell you. Right? I, I really have no idea. Because she's does she has more damage the other way around. And she tends to perform better this way, which really doesn't make any sense at all. So I was testing it out earlier and I was thinking, okay, so what if we just give her a bunch of speed, right? And maybe it's the speed that that's causing this. There's maybe some sort of a 30 meter threshold or something like that. So I went ahead and I made her a lot faster. So I changed the weapon and the shield now to give her a lot more speed. Now she has 205 speed and we're gonna go ahead and run her again. And she's going to do the same thing that she did before, that she just did on the second time I was showing her. Soulbound shot, A1, A1, and then A1 again. So, this way, she is a 7 second campaign farmer, right? But now she's above 200 speed. And she's still not using her A1 on the first wave, which I'm not exactly sure why that's happening. She really has the potential to be one of the best campaign farmers in the game, but these stats that I have on her now with 200 speed and all this damage, like that's really not accessible to a lot of players. So it's not it's not fair for me to kind of be like, oh, just put 200 speed on her and 250 crit damage and 4k attack, it's fine. I mean, there's a lot of champions out there that can farm with those stats. So it would be really much better if we could just build her with no speed, kind of like we can't bellow or something, and she would just one-shot every wave, kind of like I showed if I run her manual. And it's really disappointing that she runs this way because it just makes her a lot less viable than she normally would be. And I think that the only issue here is coding. Let me know in the comments below how you guys feel about this, or maybe I'm missing something here. But like I said, I've done a bunch of testing today and I honestly could not get her to do a one first on the first wave in the campaign. And I think that that would be really important because she's a spirit rare champion and she could be a lot more accessible than Bellower. And that way, if you have Kale, you can use Kale in level 20 dungeons for a poisoner and on the clan boss as a poisoner. And in order to do that, you need to build him tanky. So it's better... It's better for a newer player or for a lower budget player to be able to have a champion like this that they can use for a reliable campaign farmer and not have to rely on Kale. So we're going to go ahead and run her in, in dungeons as well. She performs really well in Spider and in Fire Knight. The only thing that we need to change here is we need to give her accuracy. And uh, we're actually going to go back to that damaging set that I had before. Okay, so the total stats now are 185 speed. We have 200 accuracy, and we have good damage, and uh, we have good attack and crit damage. I don't want to leave her at the 200 something speed again because, like I said, getting all those stats on there might not be possible for everyone. So I'm kind of trying to tweak some of my artifacts around. Obviously, I'm using a lot of the six star artifacts there, so that's why I showed her kind of without the crit damage neck and all that stuff, kind of trying to make it more appealing for a lower budget player to be like oh okay she's actually really good maybe i should build her 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run her on Spider. Now, on this particular account, I don't have Ultimate Gaelic built. So, yes, I'm going to run Tyrant. I have Monster. But you don't need to have Monster. You would need to build her tanky for this if she were to use her without... So instead of the attack percentage chest, you would probably just run hit points percentage gloves. And honestly, for the crit damage, like if you were using it for Spider just for the actual terra meter depletion, you can run her tanky and she will perform really well. Except that she does not do the soulbound move on auto. So I'm going to show this now. This could be Ultimate Gaelic, by the way, and this could be Gorgorab for this particular team. Like let's say you have Monster and you don't have Tyrant or you don't have Trunda, like an AOE HP bird, you don't have Ignatius. Ultimate Gaelic will do fine here. And he is pretty much accessible or was accessible to a lot of players and a lot of players do have him. And then Gorgorab or any other form of attack up will work here. All right, so let's run it and see how it works. So the reason why she is good here is because she has a turn meter depletion and with the AOE HP burn strategy, you want to deplete the, the boss's turn meter, the spider's turn meter as much as you possibly can. So the thing that is kind of not so good here is that for some reason, she does not use her soulbound arrow here. She doesn't deplete the target's turn meter. So you see, under no condition is she actually using the move. I think that it would have to be four spiderlings, or that it ha it has to be um, four spiderlings or less for her to use that move. And in which point in time are there going to be no spiders on the field when you're doing this? So the only way to get her to do the move is to actually click on the boss. Just like I did there, and then she does it. I really don't understand why the AI is this way. I'm assuming that it wasn't intended for her to be like this. And the silly thing here is that she has a move that is very viable for spider 19 and 20 especially for spider 19 and with her being with her being a spirit champion but she doesn't perform that well on auto and maybe some people don't know how to click the boss and and also she can't be used for farming because of that reason so with her not using it on auto it means that you can't really do the 100 battles overnight you can't really auto click with her if you're relying on that term meter reduction and it really feels bad because she's perfectly viable, I think, for Spider. And because of her coding or whatever it is that makes her do her moves weird is, is a problem. And the same problem occurs with Royal Guard. He does takedown on one target. Seer will do her Karma Burn on one target. Kaimar does... Ability reset without any abilities being on cooldown. Like, some of these... Like, Primar is a legendary champion. It He should function properly. Like, you shouldn't have to change your whole team around one champion not functioning properly. Because, like, for example, with Kaimar, you have to make him the slowest on your team. To where, really, it would make sense that if he was fastest on your team. So, like, when you're doing... When you're using Kaimar for... When you're using Kaimar for speed runs if Kaima went first and didn't use his ability reset your whole team would do the whole zerg setup you would do the aoe defense down and you would you would destroy the first wave you would go into the second wave Kaima would then ability reset and the same thing would happen which is how i always thought it would work but it doesn't so the issue one of the many issues in this game is coding so I really don't know what it's going to take for Flarium to start making this game properly and to start taking us seriously because 
these issues are honestly unacceptable. I know that this is a champion guide, but with this champion guide becomes the issue of coding. So I want to fully address how impossible it is to build around these champions and make different teams when the coding is completely crap. And I really hope that Plarium fixes this. So we're going to go ahead and run her on Fire Knight as well. She is good here. So with Evil Eye being on her in her mastery tree, when she does her A1, she depletes everyone's turn meter a little bit, which allows us to control the mobs better. And that is definitely very useful on pretty much all dungeon waves. Fire Knight, Golem, Dragon. If you can make the enemy not take, or if you can make the enemy take less turns, that is exactly what you want. So not only is it useful to have a Evil Eye on her A1, her A1 also does a lot of damage, as you can see here, if you build her for damage. She definitely helps us clear these ways faster. Normally, I run, like on my account, I run Seer here, and obviously Seer is one of the best wave clears in the game. Shout out to Stu for that. So here we go. Kolhar did her to decrease turn meter. Soulbound shot, decrease turn meter. She hits for 100k with her with her um, ignore defense move. Mm -hmm. And there you have it. 1 minute 32 run. She did a million damage. So Overall, she's uh, she's a very, very good champion that just needed a little bit of a rework when it comes to coding and how she operates on auto because she does not necessarily operate properly in the campaign. No on Spider because there's something wrong with when she uses her A1 versus her other abilities with how many enemies there are. Um, I couldn't find that there was speed that had anything to, to, uh, to do with it. If you guys do find something that is different here that we could do more testing on, please let me know in the comments below. I am definitely more than willing to chat about this. Let's go ahead and take a look at her artifacts again real quick. I built for crit damage and attack. Normally here, for just campaign farming, you could just do attack percentage boots. And you could also do attack banner because you don't really need accuracy for campaign farming. Her masteries, we went with crit damage and uh, evil eye are the important ones. Also, methodical, more damage on array one. And then the obvious choices here crit rate and crit damage will definitely help her out. But how you saw earlier, when you take 40% crit damage out, you can still, with similar stats, so what do I have here? So, with about 230 crit damage. You can uh, you can comfortably farm campaign with her. Her skills are also fully booked. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Please leave a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.